Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship on this lovely June day, Trinity Sunday. I'm sure you are all well aware that that's what it is today as we move into this season of spirit, sometimes called the season of Pentecost, a time of walking closely with the Lord through the work of the Holy Spirit. And today we come into the mystery of this God whom we have come to know, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer, many ways in which we try to deepen our understanding of the one who is completely unknowable but makes God's self known to us through revelation and uh, we hope that God will be revealed to you today in worship as we raise hearts and voices but we uh, also know we come into the presence of the Lord needing to be cleansed of sin and to uh, drop burdens and other things that we may bear in our hearts and in our lives so take a moment examine your heart prepare yourself for worship and we will gather around the brief order for confession and forgiveness I invite the community to rise as you are able. <clears throat> Family of God, we gather for worship today as we live our lives in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit so that we might perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Family of God, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us that sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. With that promise, let's come to God in confession. <clears throat> Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight to your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. We all fall short. We have not been the children of God this past week, probably even today. But our God is a renewing God who is constant in his presence and forgiving in his heart. Enter into that forgiveness now. Because we know, in the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God for this gift of grace. Let us praise God for it as we sing, Holy, Holy, Holy.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I would invite the community to be seated, but let us continue to glorify God as we sing meekness and majesty. Knowing 
and suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time, God, God, Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more surely then, now that we have been justified by his blood, will we be saved through him from the wrath of God. For if, while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his Son, much more surely, having been reconciled, will we be saved by his life. But more than that, we even boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Normally at this moment I might invite children to come forward. Anybody, uh, you're, you're kind of close enough. You know what, I know we got a couple who kind of tuned in, and uh, so I'm just going to go for it. It <laughs> goes where it goes, and if it feels a little odd, well, too bad. <laughs> so, for those tuned in, we're not live streaming today, but we'll have some tuned in later. And uh, for, uh, for you here today, you can see that uh, Trinity Sunday is... It's, uh, somebody has said it's the only Sunday in the church year that's dedicated to theology, to a doctrine. There's nowhere in the Bible, uh, as I'm sure you all know, where that word, Trinity, ever comes up. But it does represent to us of God coming and revealing God's self to people in three ways, in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in the Trinity. And so I thought, well, I don't know if there's any way to really explain a mystery, and that's really what we proclaim today is that God is, in so many ways, mystery to us. But that God has shown God's self in three ways. And so I got, uh, you can see here, a rope that I've, uh, uh, three pieces of rope that have been all tied together. And so, you know, it's, it's three sections, uh, but one rope, in a way. Uh, and, you know, so sometimes we, you know, we got a little section here, and maybe that represents the Holy Spirit, because we're Lutherans, we don't always talk about the Holy Spirit on off a lot of Pentecost Sunday, and, and he sneaks into a sermon maybe every now and then, and we proclaim, but, you know, the Holy Spirit gets a little short shrift sometimes, but maybe that could be Holy Spirit, and then maybe slightly larger, and maybe even the biggest piece is the Son, Jesus, uh, God made flesh, uh, and we talk about Jesus a lot, and, you know, the old Sunday school saying, if you don't know the answer, just say Jesus, because yeah. in the church, most of the time, that's the answer. And he is the answer for us. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And so there's this big section there. And then, yeah, we do talk of God, creator, our maker, the one who is over all, uh, and, and the one who has called all things into being. But yet in this strange mystery, we've got these three parts, but they're all one. And, and how can you ever fully unpack a mystery? Well, I don't know if you ever really can. All you got to do with a mystery hey. is trust. <laughs> uh, except it is a mystery. How does it work? I'll tell you later. <laughs> but we, we admire, we wonder, we give praise to the one who has made us, who calls us into being, who sets us free in Jesus Christ and gives us the power to continue to live in that freedom and the work of the Holy Spirit. We invoke Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and we give thanks for God's presence today and always, and the mystery that is God. Let's come to God in prayer. Holy God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, how can we ever find words that will ever fully comprehend or encapsulate who you are? We cannot. And so we praise you. We worship you. We adore you. We grow in the little bits of understanding we can come as we experience you in our, our lives and we pray, God, that you would be over us in all the ways that you can be revealed, reveal yourself to us, and help us to walk closely with you in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. <coughs> I won't give away the secret. <laughs> but I will invite you to rise as you are able. Please, let us join together in our gospel acclamation. Father, we love you. <coughs>
from the Gospel of John, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. John writes, Jesus said to them, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. I invite the community to be seated. Friends in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. Well, I heard uh, about a Sunday school, Sunday school class that was meeting little kids and the teacher trying to, trying to encourage conversation, trying to make them uh, think a little bit about stuff that's really hard to think about and stuff that maybe you can't really fully unpack. And so this teacher asked the class, so kids, can you tell me which did God create first, the chicken or the egg? Ooh, that's a, that's a brain scratcher, right? You probably had hour-long discussions, I'm sure, in your own time on this, that kind of deep, deep stuff. And she figured she had them going. Uh, but one little girl put up her hand, and so she said, the teacher said to that girl, oh, oh, you got an answer? And she said, yes, without a question, God created the chicken first. Oh, well, how are you so sure about that? Because God don't lay no eggs. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm not a little grown, that's okay. <laughs> well, we do come together today on this Trinity Sunday to, uh, to contemplate a mystery, uh, to just to stand or sit and be present in adoration and praise to the one who is so much beyond our complete comprehension while we live in this life until God is fully revealed in the world that is to come. And we proclaim God Trinity. And I, you know, if you're a church going person, if you've been around worship for enough years, I don't know how many Trinity uh, sermons you've heard, and, and maybe you're already starting to, you know, nod off a little bit. Trinity, here we go again. <laughs> That's going to come up, and you know, the, the old chestnut of the egg, well, there's the shell, the yolk, the, uh, the whites, or, or water, uh, liquid, gas, frozen, all this kind of stuff, and, and uh, I'm not even going to try. <laughs> I, I've had a few in the past. I always go back and look at my notes so that I try not to dig up old stories that maybe I've used already. That does happen sometimes, but they're so good. I'm doing it again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think this will be the last one. That one. All right. uh, we, do, we do proclaim God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God is a God who wants to be known. God does reveal God's self in so very many ways. Uh, and the earliest of church, let me give you just a little history, just a little theology, and then we can move on to some other reflections. But if you go and do a little study, if you Google it, you can find some books. Let me tell you, i got a whole pile of them. But in the earliest centuries of the church, as it was spreading and growing and, and, and coming into new nations and new peoples, you know, there was a lot of talk about who is this God. And, and so church leaders did much deep reflection and much study of scripture and prayer and conversation. Uh, and, and it was a culture in which there were pluralities of gods right everywhere you go. The Romans, boy, they had a god for absolutely everything. Any little thing that you had going on, you could appeal to some god or another. Uh, so, you know, they wanted to try to make sure that they affirmed the ancient affirmation of Israel that here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. That there is but one God over all that is. And they wanted to make sure they affirmed that. But they had to make sure they weren't straying too far. And, and because there were some people saying, well, Jesus was just a guy, just a really good teacher, a good man. Maybe you've heard some of this kind of stuff yourself in conversations. And, and they wanted to affirm that, but that Jesus was more than that, that God made flesh, and that there was this incarnation of God present in the world in Jesus. And some people went too far with that. Well, Jesus was just a spirit. He just kind of looked like a person, but really he was just this, this ghostly uh, being who just walked among us for a while and then, and then went back into heaven. Think that's right either. There was full humanity uh, in Jesus, born of a woman, and so they had to come through all these permutations. And what they kind of settled on was what we call the Trinity. Uh, and they used the term that I'm just that's the little piece I want to put before you. They say God in three persons. And when we start to wrestle with that, well, we think three people, three persons, that's three, three things. Three, God is three, then it's got to be three different beings. 
But the actual term comes from Greek theater, a persona. I know this is maybe not the most exciting piece, but hang, hang with me. A persona was what they called the mask. Now, any theater goers here, any theater history buffs, in Greek theater, rather than having different characters come in, the actor might put on a different mask to represent anger or sadness or fear, right? And they put on a different mask, and they call those masks the persona. Always the same actor, but a different representation of that actor for the audience, for those who were there. And they said, maybe that's about as close as we want to try to go in trying to define God's activity. That God puts on these different representations for us so that we can come to understand some level of God and enter into a relationship with God in these ways. And so we talk of God in three personas, three people. And I know that's challenging, and you know what? Thanks be to God. Our salvation is not dependent on being able to describe and define exactly who God is and put God into this nice, neat little box that we carry around and just dump it out in front of people. Rather, God says, come into the mystery and sit for a while. Let me speak to you a bit more of who I am, who I can be for you in your life. And that's where I want to kind of draw us back into the book of Romans a little bit, where Paul gives us this beautiful little phrase, and I encourage you to commit it to heart and memory. Uh, it's, it's beautiful. Romans chapter 5, verses 3 to 5. We rejoice in suffering, even, because we know that suffering produces endurance. And endurance produces character. And character produces hope. Hope will never disappoint us. Maybe you know a little bit about suffering. Maybe you understand what it is to struggle in your life for a lot of different reasons, right? We've come through two years of what might feel like suffering for individuals and for the community of God. In all the ways we've had to go up against difficulties and problems, and maybe you're wrestling with things right now in your very own life. Uh, it could be issues of health, it could be issues of employment, it could be issues of relationships, families. Boy, the list goes long. We can lie awake at night cataloging it. God says, I'm present in the suffering. I'm with you to guide you and guard you through it. And uh, some of you know me well enough to know that I'm a big football fan. And uh, if you're following anything, you know a little bit the CFL season has started again. So get ready for a summer full of football anecdotes. And, you know, <laughs> not everybody's love, but yeah, you won yesterday at your little plane. Anyway, it doesn't matter. But in football, as I understand it, I put a little bit way back when, back in school, but the you know, coaches watch very carefully the game. And they have a statistic called yak yards. Some of you who are big football heads will know that. So let me explain what that is. Y-A-C. And it generally, see, somebody who knows football knows. It generally stands for yards after catch. Right? The coaches are always watching. When the receiver catches the ball, how many extra yards they get, do they get from the point at which they caught the ball? And then they can coach them on all that kind of stuff. But some coaches will, in fact, even watch what's called yards after contact. That's usually for the running back. One who gets handed the ball, and then they got to charge through these giant elephants of human beings who are, who are trying to rip them down and pull them down and squish them and flatten them and all that stuff. And so coaches watch. How does a running back do when they get contact? Because they're not getting through that line untouched. Very, very rarely. Every running back is going to slam into somebody. Somebody's going to slam into them. And do they keep plowing? Do they keep the legs charging? Do they keep trying to move that ball forward after they've had that first contact, that first hit? And that's kind of what Paul invites us into with our suffering. He says, you're going to get hit. You're going to have aspects of life in so very many different ways that are going to try to flatten you, stop you. Keep going. Keep pushing. You have a Savior who is well acquainted with sorrow and suffering. But by his stripes, you can be healed. As you lean on him and hold fast to him in those times of suffering, and how wrong? And let's, I, I'm not going to be uh, Pollyanna up here. Suffering can last a long time. And just when you feel like you're getting out of one suffering, maybe another one's going to come at you. And so we need to be deeply grounded in prayer and devotion and worship and fellowship so that we know we can continue to go forward. And as we grow in that, as we learn that it doesn't flatten us, it does not destroy us, that we can continue, we begin to endure, we build some spiritual muscle. Now, I'm a pretty spindly kind of guy, so I shouldn't be talking a whole lot about muscle, but it is the spirit within us who gives us strength. 
who is the one that enables us to endure, who we can lean on, and all those promises that God has poured out to us. I heard a story about uh, two friends who were sitting together, quite elderly, and one of them knew that life was winding down, and it was hard, and said, you know, all my life, I have dined on the promises of God. Each and every day, I've held on to them, but right now in my life, I can't remember a single one. And the friend turned and said, but do you think that God has forgotten? It begins with God. God is faithful to God's promises. <coughs> God does not turn away. God will continue to enable us to endure. And, and it's a little bit like this, I think. I read, a, I read about uh, forests and trees, particularly trees that grow in very arid, very dry uh, climates, or perhaps high up on mountains. And what people have found is that they can look pretty normal, right? <coughs> the bark is growing on the tree and it's all straight. But if you were to cut that tree down or peel away the bark, often you find that the wood inside is twisted. It is turned as that tree has grown in that difficult climate. And what they have determined is that that twisting, in fact, enables the tree to stand strong against the buffet of winds, against all the harshness of climate that will go up against it as it grows and it twists, and that in fact that twisting enables it to bring forth from the ground and up to the top water. That it is a much more effective mechanism for water to climb the tree and keep it alive. And the psalmist says that the people of God who lean upon him are like trees planted beside living waters as we hold firm to the promises that the Spirit affirms in us, we, yeah, we get twisted sometimes, but we can discover that in fact it makes us stronger, that we endure even better as we hold firm to Him. And he moves us forward so that we will have a hope that transcends anything that this life can offer. Our finances, the doctor and healthcare, many good things that yes, will enable us and help us in this life, but above all of them, and even within all of those things, is God saying, put your hope in me. Lots of times in the church, we speak of ourselves as being sheep. And we don't always love that uh, image of being sheep. But that's for another sermon, maybe on Good Shepherd Sunday. I'm going to tell you that you guys are toads. <clears throat> How do you like that? I think being a sheep is bad. How about being a toad? The reason I say that is because if you go research all this, go Google it. In Britain, there is an organization called Help a Toad Cross the Road. I don't know why a toad wants to cross the road. They're like chickens, I guess. They just want to get to the other side. Probably deeper than that, there's, there's you know, ancient ways of pathways that toads have traveled for centuries where they can find uh, sources of water, uh, spawning grounds, food, all those kind of things. But they don't know anything about highways and roads and and traffic lights and intersections, and so there are these people who have come to love toads, even a toad, this ugly little weird creature that's slow moving and, and doesn't hop very well, they love them, and they want to see them cared for. And so they will go to these highways, and they've petitioned the uh, government to create toad crossing signs, so that people who are driving, maybe will slow down a little bit and watch for a toad on the road, or if they have to, and there's major migrations going, they'll actually get out there and stop traffic so that the toads can cross the road. But one of them said, wouldn't it be so good if we could become a toad? And we could teach them. We could show them how to cross safely, to watch for vehicles, uh, times of day when they're best able to do this stuff, best crossing places, all these kind of things. Well, as fellow toads, we have one who took on our not-so-lovely nature so very often, who became like us so that we might know how to cross the road. Across the road, through the cross, through knowing deep in our heart and in our life that Jesus Christ loves us with a love that will not let us go and will walk with us each and every day in all the suffering that comes our way, growing our faith so that we do endure and affirming that hope that is ours forever and ever. When we leave this place, often crossing the road, remember one who is right there with you. Lean deeply upon him. Bring him your suffering that he might enable you to endure and hold firm to his hope. May God make it so. Amen. Amen.
did say in the kids' message that we maybe put a lot of emphasis on Jesus, but rightly so, it is in him that we have first and foremost met God. So let's rise and proclaim that as we sing our hymn of the day, In Christ Alone. <laughs> Confess our faith. I invite you to join heart and voice as we proclaim the Apostles' Creed. Let us join together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. <clears throat> I invite the community to be seated. Uh, Pre-COVID times, at this point in the worship service, we would often pass the plate and invite people to offer gifts from themselves for the service of Christ in the world. We give thanks for those gifts. And in fact, we have moved now into the season of Pentecost, which is very much about the gifts that God has placed in our hands. We're very thankful as a community that uh, we have many gifts represented here online in so very many ways. So thank you and God's blessings to you for the ways in which you offer of yourself time, talent, and treasure for the mission and ministry of our community called Trinity. Let us now commit ourselves to God. Let your heart be still and know that God is in this place as we offer ourselves in prayer. Holy God, you are one in three and three in one. 
We praise you this day, for you are the source of all life, the maker of heaven and earth. You created us and called us good. You shepherd us with your steadfast love and presence. Open our eyes to you be with us. Lord Jesus Christ, we praise you this day. You were born into our midst to show us the way of goodness and mercy and grace. Holy Spirit, we praise you this day. For you bring us purpose and energy. You place gifts in our hands each and every day and call us forth in service and grace for the world. Holy God, three in one, one in three, reveal to us this day what it means to be your people so that we would honor your holy name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, Holy One, and Holy Three, we bless you this day before you have brought us into communion with you. Help us to come to deeper understandings of what that means. You grant us the same love that you share as Blessed Trinity. Help your church throughout the world in all of its expressions, for there is diversity. Help us to know our unity that we have through your Son, Jesus Christ. Help us to take those diverse gifts that you have given to us and to explore what it might mean to offer them to one another and to this world. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. hear our prayer. God, you are a mystery that, yes, we cannot fully comprehend. And yet, in your creation, we catch glimpses. You have made the human family to know your love and to find ways to share that love. We want to pray for our nation, our community, in a time in which uh, different experience and opinion so very often easily divides us, where we, we confess before you, God, where we have acted without regard for the needs of others, help us to work for justice and fairness, where we have been blind to the pain of those who are oppressed, open our eyes and our hearts for opportunities to share what we may have. We pray especially for our nation, and we pray that you would guide us along the path of reconciliation with our indigenous brothers and sisters and, and anyone else where we need to find ways to open our hearts, to listen, to find healing. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Holy God, do we need healing. You know our lives. You know our hearts. You know our relationships. We pray for anyone who might be feeling despair or anxiety in their life. We pray for those who find their illnesses are not being relieved, grant strength. For those who have lost someone dear to them, or perhaps lost an opportunity that they longed for. For all those people and situations, we bring them to you. Hear us now as we offer them in prayer, both silently and aloud. God, that you receive our prayers. Thank you that you respond as you know is best. Give your wisdom to each and every one of us and us as a community together to see the path that leads to your future, to have energy and desire to pursue it. We pray for those who are struggling in any way in life. You have heard the names and situations. We pray that your spirit would go forth to touch each and every one of them. I pray for Reverend uh, Marilyn Fowley Neufeld, for her health concerns and issues for the, uh, our brothers and sisters at Augustana Lutheran as they uh, try to figure out ways to be shepherded and move forward in ministry. For Reverend Dr. Ali Cote, who will be installed as assistant to the bishop, granting wisdom and courage and insight into this new ministry that he takes up. We pray, God, that you would uh, send forth your spirit. For to you be all glory. You visit us in three persons, hope, love, strength. 
There is no place that is without you, O God. There is no time where you are not there. You are the beginning and the end, the source of all that is in the wonder of universal life. And yet you step into our life individually, offering to take us by the hand and lead us. For in Jesus you have shown us that you know and understand the human way. In the Holy Spirit, we are gifted again and again and called on to that future that you have for us. And so now, as your Son has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from the evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I invite the community to rise as you are able to enter into the blessing of God. Let me give you one last story. Because it's a pastor story. I heard about a pastor who had a number of new members enter into the church who weren't really well versed in liturgy and the ways in which worship often happens, some of the language, especially response and call. And so the pastor was teaching them a little bit about when the pastor says, the Lord be with you, everybody says, and I'm also with you. And so they were kind of getting it, and they got it down, down pat real good. And so the moment of worship came, but the pastor was having a little trouble with his wireless mic. And so as he came forward to greet the congregation, he kind of looked at you, ah, there's something wrong with this microphone. And all those new members declared, and also with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't deny it. But I give thanks that it is not dependent upon me, but the grace of God. Go in God's grace. Know that he is watching over you each and every day. Walk in his blessing. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. May the Lord look upon us with favor and give us peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I would invite the community once again to be seated. And uh, we have a few announcements. Uh, it's kind of the same old loop. Speaking of loop, if you come to worship a little bit early, we will be running the announcement loop uh, prior to worship services. Many wonderful, beautiful, inspiring images, uh, statements, Bible verses. This can be a wonderful way to enter into worship if you come into this place. And it will also update you on a little bit of things maybe that are coming up. Uh, I'll update you because next Sunday we hope to celebrate our outdoor picnic worship here at Trinity. We will do it on our south grounds. Uh, so far, forecast looks maybe not too bad, but we'll see how it goes. If we can be outside, please bring a lawn chair or a blanket for yourself to sit upon. Probably a hat is a good idea, maybe some bug spray. Uh, we worship at our usual time. We abbreviate the worship a bit so we're not out there too long, maybe getting too hot. And then afterwards, we'll have a hot dog, barbecued hot dog lunch. If you are able to provide a side, that would be appreciated, but uh, it's not required. Come, be together in fellowship in that way, and we pray that it'll be a blessing as we gather in God's creation. And if it's raining, we'll gather in here, where we are God's creation. We're out, we are out there too. <laughs> so take note of that, next Sunday, and then during summer, I heard this a bunch, I'm posting it to Facebook. It's gonna be on our website. If you go to trinitylutheransastitude.ca, go to the events link, and you'll find our calendar. And if you, I can't do this, thankfully, somebody else has talent. <laughs> if you click on that link, it'll give you a nice box that'll tell you exactly what time worship is happening, where it's happening through all these weeks of the summer, and it'll even give you a link to a map so that you can find exactly how to get there. So you don't have a lot of excuses for skipping out on worship. The first three Sundays are King of Glory, Sunday evening at 6.30. That's over in Montgomery, 3318 Merritt Street. The middle three Sundays are here at Trinity, so that one's a no-brainer, that should be easy. Uh, and then the final three Sundays in August, 14th, 21st, 28th, Resurrection Lutheran, 10 o'clock. It'll be a little bit of a test for your faith and your uh, spiritual muscles to, to do this. Uh, but that's over at 310 Lenore Drive. Again, go online. You can find all this. Uh, become a friend on Facebook so you can get those updates on a weekly basis as I shoot them out to remind where you are. Uh, and uh, that should do for announcements. Other than to lift up those who celebrate this week. <coughs> rejoice. I do not have anniversaries to, uh, to raise, but I have birthdays. Josh Farrell, Faith Enright, and Emily Salzel Headland all celebrate their birthdays this week. Let's celebrate with them. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear friends. May Jesus bless you. Amen. Let us rise. We conclude our time of worship, our sending.
ending song, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing.